So thank you to Emily. Um, I've had the chance to be out in Bertie County and to visit the Studio H classroom. Um, happened to be out there when they were building the chicken coops and getting to talk with some of the students. It really is a, a transformative experience. And watching the video, I started to tear up just kind of, you know, remembering conversations with some of the students. Um, and that's what, that's what love of bubbles looks like at high school. Um, so thank you again for sharing all of that. And, and going back to Emily's takeaway messages, I really hope that we don't watch that and then say, yeah, but my community is different. We couldn't do that. And I think you're right that it's, it's not about saying, let's replicate what's happening there, but let's take inspiration from the, kinds of, from the kind of STEM education that's happening there. Now it is my pleasure to welcome North Carolina Superintendent of Public Instruction, June Atkinson. Dr. Atkinson is the first female elected state superintendent of the public schools of North Carolina and has served in that role since 2005. Dr. Atkinson understands the importance of improving teaching and learning, creating environments that encourage student success, and graduating every student ready. She has been a tremendous influence on our work in this state, and it brings me great pleasure to welcome you. Well, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, what a joy it was to hear Emily's presentation, and I think of, of Studio H, and I'm thinking, what does H stand for? And for me, it stands for happy. Uh, I am happy that we have prototypes across North Carolina where you do not know where the community stops and where school starts. And I'm happy that this model that you're talking about, you do not know where math and science start and construction ends or begins. You do not know where teaching stops and learning begins. And you do not know where processes begin and where products stop. So it's an integrated, multidisciplinary approach that really focuses on preparing our students to be college and career ready. We just enjoyed a wonderful meal, and I'm thinking about all the great things that can come from our strategic plan and all the efforts that are underway with STEM, and I cannot help bring that back to a need that I have. As state superintendent, uh, I am away from my home a lot, and that means I rarely, if ever, cook. And that means that my refrigerator sometimes has things in it that I don't know what they were in the original form. <laughs> and I also know that ever so often I may pull out a jar of mayonnaise and it has the expiration date of 2007. So I have a need, and my need is that I need someone to design a robot that will be able to check my refrigerator to determine what to throw away and what to keep. And I need that robot to have some sense of, spell, of smell because that would give a hint about what needs to be kept and what needs to be thrown away. And I also need for that robot to be able to detect expiration dates so that those things can be thrown away in an environmentally safe way. And I believe that through the efforts that we have underway in STEM in our state, that there will be someone in our schools who will be able to develop, to design that robot that I can use. Because STEM really is about looking at needs, finding solutions by using the foundation that is necessary in order to be creative, in order to design, in order to build. I also have another need. I travel throughout North Carolina. I travel a lot, so I am always packing my suitcases. And sometimes, 
uh, I need to have a big suitcase. And if you've traveled uh, recently, you know that it costs $25 or $30 to um, check a suitcase. And so I have a need, and my need is I want someone to be able to take a big suitcase that I would have and smush it so that it's about that size and I could put it in my purse and get on that plane without any difficulty. And then when I arrive at my destination, I want someone to give me a device that would also be very small, but where I could put the air back into my clothing and my stuff. So I have a need, and I believe that if someone can develop this gizmo, then that person can contribute much to the economic development of North Carolina. That's what STEM is about, contributing to the economic development and the standard of living for our state. And I also have had an experience that I want to share with you, and this took place in Independence, Virginia, and in Surrey County, North Carolina. Is anyone here from Surrey County? All right. Well, how many of you have ever gone paragliding? Raise your hand. A few? Well, about 10 to, about 10 to 15 years ago, my husband-to-be had this great idea that we would go to Independence, Virginia, and learn how to paraglide. And after I tell you this story, you may wonder why I ever married him. But I did. But anyway, we went to Independence, Virginia to learn how to paraglide, and we had an instructor, and I was one of five people in that class. And so with paragliding, you have this uh, oblong, para, uh, like a parachute, and then you have this harness. And what you're supposed to do is to go to a bit, really big, tall mountain and run and jump off. And then the paraglider is to help you get to the ground and you can just sort of sail around. Well, we went to Independence, Virginia, and there was no air. There was no wind. But uh, being a good instructor, the instructor says, well, let's go to another place. Well, let's go to a farm in Surrey County. And at that farm, what I can do is that I can teach you the fundamentals of landing. And so we went to this farm, and there was this long sloping hill, and next to this long sloping hill was a barbed wire fence. So we all get to the top of the hill, and the four guys in my class went running down the hill, and they got a little lift of about four feet, and then they would land. Well, it was my turn. I start running down that hill, and I fall. And then when I pick myself up, my paraglider is turned to the right rather than going straight, and the wind gets underneath my paraglider, and I go up and miss the barbed wire fence of about three feet. And then I keep going to the height of a 10-story building. <laughs> and I am flying high, and I look down, and I see the cows in the field, and the barn, and it was so quiet for a moment. It was the, one of the most serene places that I'd ever been until I realized I had no idea how to land. And all of a sudden, I heard my instructor say, June, can you hear me? And I said, yes. And he says, listen very carefully as I tell you how to land. And so I did everything he told me to do and I had a perfect landing. And I was so relieved. I wasn't hurt. I was still alive. And so in a moment of thanksgiving, I fall to my hands and feet, and that was my only injury. I had briars all in my hands because I'd fallen into a briar patch. So what does this have to do with STEM? Well, just as the wind lifted me higher and higher. I believe that the approach that you heard Emily talk about is a way to get wind beneath the sails of our students so that they can soar and so that they can have a great landing when it comes to be prepared for the world that they are going to face. 
that they will be prepared to design, to build, to create, to solve problems, and to think critically about all of the issues that we will face as a state, as a nation, and as a world. And a part of that whole notion of being the wind that will lift us higher and higher when it comes to economic development, our standing standard of living, is to make sure that we have teachers and instructors and adults who are prepared to lead and guide and teach and learn in a different way of teaching, a different way of being ready, a way of remodeling education as we do it today. So today, I am delighted to introduce to you the initial cohort of interns for the NC STEP. How many of you know what NC STEP stands for? Raise your hand. I know where the New Schools Project people are pe sitting <laughs> and some of the people who are a part of this initiative. NC STEM stands for NC STEM Teacher Education Program. And this program, over the next five years, will train almost 200 individuals from STEM careers to become STEM teachers in our schools. And we are excited about this because this is yet another way that we can go about remodeling public education in North Carolina. And so today I have the privilege of introducing to you the first group of students, excuse me, of students and people who will be a part of NC STEP. And what I'd like for us to do as you see their names is to give them a three clap salute. So let's roll the names. We have from Caldwell Early College High School, we have Lisa Evans, and please stand. Lisa Evans, Jennifer Kirby, Jane uh, Casanis. How did I do with that? Thank you. Uh, Jill Perry and Bethany Starms. Let's give them a three clap salute. <laughs> All right, let's go to Wayne School of Engineering. Melissa Abbott, Joan Anderson, Andrea Blunt, Tiffany Robinson. A three clap salute. <laughs> Next, we have Cross Creek Early College High School. We have Tamika Carter, Natioa Hassan. How'd I do with that? <laughs> and Kevin O'Connell. Will you please stand for a three clap salute? <laughs> we also have from Hillside New Tech High School, Gabriel Mack. Anthony Pierce, David St. Clair, are we related? That's my maiden name. <laughs> and Jennifer Whittington, let's give them a three clap salute. <laughs> and now let's show our enthusiasm about NC STEP by giving all of them a round of applause. I know that following these ses this session, there will be really some interesting sessions that you may see the demonstrations of our students and the work that